Morning, everyone. James, JT Motive, Lifestyle and Motivation. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope everyone is good on this gorgeous morning. Um, I want to start off by thanking everyone who's watched and commented and commented, speak properly, James, and subscribed because not only have I been getting um, comments um, and encouragement as well, I've uh, Gail, my wife, who posts it on Facebook and stuff. She's all, <clears throat> she's also been getting comments and and texts off people, say it, thanking for the videos and uh, this sort of video has helped because X Y Z or um, somebody struggling at the minute, so I've sent them this video and stuff, and <clears throat> it blows me away because I think ten years, nearly ten years ago. Uh, I was unemployable. Nobody wanted to know me at all. Um, most of my family, most of my family, apart from my mum and dad had disowned me, <clears throat> they didn't want to know me. Um, and I was just an absolute mess. <clears throat> so going from that to nearly 10 years ago to where People are thanking me for helping. And obviously, I then give it to God, all glory to God. It's nothing to do with me. Because, um, hand on heart, <clears throat> if I had my way where I wouldn't need to do this stuff, then then I wouldn't. But God gives me the strength and the courage um, to do this. Because at the very beginning, over a month ago, when I first started, it was a couple of people, uh, a customer, uh, who's not obviously a, a mate now, and uh, one of my bosses, and they said, you've got to do it. And I was like, nah, nobody wants to listen. And he's like, honestly, honestly, you've done your WhatsApp for ages. You've just, just try it. So I thought, you know what? I'll just try it. And uh, and as I can see from what people are doing, it's uh, it's helping. It's helping. So that's great. Let me have done my readings. Let me go inside. <clears throat> a little bit chilly this morning <clears throat> it has just gone six though so my gorgeous wife's in there training so the readings today amazing again 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 short i'm sure i'll make it long but uh <coughs> so and it brings up with recovery as well um, on the reading, so it's uh, it's only short and it's teaching about vows. Doesn't mean vows for marriage, even though yesterday's was about divorce that I've not done a video on. It's about vows where, well, I'll read it and then we'll speak. So vows were common, but Jesus told his followers not to use them. Their word alone should be enough. Are you known as a person of your word? Truthfulness seems so rare that we feel we must end our statements with, I promise. If we tell the truth all the time, we will have less pressure to back up our words with an oath, oath or a promise. <clears throat> we all do it. I do it still today. Um, when Gail will say, can you do that? And I'll say, I will, I promise. When really I should just say, yes, I will. That's it. Because as a Christian, as a decent human being, your word should be enough. But because this world is, is dishonest um, and distrustful, <clears throat> then people need to back it up with an oath or a promise. Um, and, and I think we're all guilty of it, I really do, but it's just being conscience, conscious, oh, I can't speak this morning, it's just being conscien, conscious, of not doing that, not finishing it off with an oath or a promise and just saying, I will, I'm doing it. Um, nothing worse than saying stuff and then not going through with it. I do that again. I do that again. I do do it eventually, but it just takes time. <laughs> um, here, Jesus was emphasising the importance of telling the truth. People were breaking vows and using sacred language casually and carelessly. Keeping vows and promises is important. It builds trust and makes committed human relationships possible. 
The Bible condemns making vows or taking oaths casually, giving your word while knowing that you won't keep it or swearing falsely in God's name. Vows are needed in certain situations only because we live in a sinful society that breeds distrust. So we do need the vows and stuff and the oaths and stuff, but that's that's the thing. It's because the world is this. Well, we live in a society that's dis, with distrust. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but what came up for me when I was reading that as well was um, when I, back in the day when I was drinking and whatnot. Um, and on a Monday morning, I'd say to my mum, because I was only young, I was still at home, and I'd say to my mum, she'd say, uh, you need to stop drinking. Uh, she didn't know I used then. You need to stop drinking. And I used to say, I promise I will. But at that time, I meant it. So when I said, I promise, and on heart, I meant it. I meant that I would. Um, stop drinking. You put me in a lie detector test. I would have flying colours, full house, as Jeremy Cow would say. You've passed. Because I meant it. But two days later, because I suffer with an illness, I have a head that says it'll be all right this time. And sometimes I don't even think at all. I just pick up and then think, what have I done? You see, <coughs> I have no choice around drink or other substances. Because if it did, I'd just get up in the morning and say, I ain't doing it, and that's enough. But I don't have a choice whether I do it or not. <coughs> People think, my brother used to say, just if you love me, you'll stop drinking. I do love you, but I can't stop drinking because I suffer with this illness, which is physical and mental, uh, which I've done another video on, which is uh, my, my journey sober for good and for all, or stop drinking for good and for all, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I always used to do the vows, I, pr I promise, I promise, um, but it never worked. You see, I knew that once I started, I couldn't stop. And I knew that once I did start, I had very little or no control over the amount I took. I couldn't just have two. I'll just have the two. I couldn't, because it would set off the the as I used to call it, the taste, but it wasn't the taste. It would set off an allergy in my body because my body doesn't break down alcohol like a normal person's, which creates like a craving, which no amount of alcohol will ever suffice, will ever like satisfy um, at all. So, but I never knew, I never knew how to stop. I never knew how, I knew that I drank a lot and I knew that once I started, I couldn't stop, but I never knew how to stop. So. I didn't understand what my step one was. I didn't understand why I kept doing what I do, what I did. And then I went into AA. And I can't be honest, for the first three or four years, I still didn't understand, even though I was trying to get sober. <coughs> it's only really in the last, say, five or six years for me studying the AA Big Book and helping people, taking people through the 12-step programme. What happens is it's very, very simple. People that can't, that have got a problem with drink, that are alcoholics, that suffer with the same illness as what I suffer with. Um, I don't know anyone that's done it without the AA 12 step. There's, there's people out there that have stopped drinking because uh, because obviously um, a warning from the missus or the doctor or, um, and they've done, they've done it by just stopping and that's cool, but I couldn't do that. Um, I couldn't do that at all. So, just so that people know, I am um, I am here to help anybody struggling through this dark time. Because obviously people, uh, I mean, al alcohol abuse and I think domestic violence has gone up something like 25% or something in this lockdown. Awful. If anybody's struggling, anybody wants just to talk or needs help with the drink and drug side, or as I said, just a chat, like or inbox at the bottom and just put some sort of a comment where I can get in touch with you. Um, but again, thank you for everyone. Like, subscribe, share as well. So a lot of people have shared it, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm always here to help. Thank you so, so much for watching. Love and blessings. Take care. Bye-bye.